from the prime sponsor of uh, Senate Bill 5480, um, the esteemed Senator Kaufman to my left. Correct. Yep. We already did it. Oh, we did the briefing and now um, Senator Kaufman's gonna give her comments on the bill. Thank you, thank you. Madam Chairs, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, Senate Bill 5480 would, would uh, remove the state's practice of um, uh, working to have the um, clients repay the state's uh, services to them when they apply for Social Security um, SSI programs. And you know, it's really in intention uh, that the state provide services to the people and that we not take away the benefits that they uh, justly deserve and are qualified for on the federal level. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kaufman. Senator Frame. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Let's call forward Tony Bowie and Babs Roberts. Um, Melanie, we heard from you already on this bill, so I'm skipping you. Thank you. And on deck, we can have Donetta Sparks, Justin Miller, and Eric Pennar. Do you have uh, Babs or Tony? Oh, they're both remote. I see. All right, Babs, I see you first in 60 seconds, quick. Uh, definitely. Thank you, Senator Wilson. For the record, my name is Babs Roberts, and I am here with uh, the Assistant Secretary for ESA, who will have most of the comments. Uh, I do have the privilege of serving as the director of the Community Services Division, which has oversight for the ABD program. In addition to the comments that Tony will make in regard to the ABD repayment component of this bill, we are um, this bill would also provide a technical fix to clarify and align referral processes between um, the Community Services Division and the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation and would align ABD and HEN referral income limits um, how those are set with how other DSHS cash programs are set and um, essentially allowing the department to update income limits in rule rather than statute when authorized in the operating budget. Thanks, Babs. Well, I'm going to cut you off because um, okay. we are at that almost time and there are folks that want to testify. And again, um, thank you. And I'm going to ask um, next up, um, Tony. Very quickly, yes. if you can, thanks. Yes, yes, thank you very much, um, uh, Chair and members. For the record, I'm Tony Bowie. I'm the Assistant Secretary for Economic Services Administration at DSHS. And currently, ABD requires recipients who have very high rates of homelessness and mental health disabilities to repay cash benefits received while awaiting approval for the Federal Supplemental Security Income, known as SSI. This bill promotes economic stability for those who are unable to work by eliminating the interim assistance repayment required for ABD recipients. I urge the committee to support Senate Bill 5480, helping combat poverty by returning resources to those that are in need. Thank you so much, Tony. We really appreciate it. Before we hear from Donetta, Justin, and Eric, just want to make sure that um, Tracy Langett, Kathleen Knudsen, Gian Mitchell, Christina Sariak, and Sharon Murphy all know that they're in case they decide to show up. Um, you got it. Um, so let's hear first from Donetta. Hi, my name's Donetta Sparks and I am pro um, Bill 5480. The reason I'm here is because uh, when I got, um, when I had started to apply for disability, it took me 18 months. And during that time, I went from having a full income working for 25 years to having no income. And while I was waiting for disability, I applied for temporary assistance and I was given $199 a month. And at the point where I received my disability from my first payment, out of that payment, the lawyer took about $2,300 and the state had me pay back almost $4,000. And at that time, having no income, I wasn't allowed to pay um, back rent, back any back bills. And so I don't understand how it's called assistance when we're required to pay it back. And so I'm hoping that um, this bill gets passed for people that are going into disability and it's a difficult process and having years and years of working and not being able to work, it's really hard to not be able to count on the state to help us with a minimal amount and then to take that back. So um, that's you. my story, thank you. Thank you, Donetta. Thank you. Justin Miller. Justin Miller, go ahead. Okay, Eric Pennar. Good evening. 
My name is Eric Pinar. I'm an attorney who focuses my practice solely on Social Security disability cases. I'm in support of SB 5480. This bill uh, could allow an SSI recipient to establish stable housing by allowing the recipient to keep more of their money so that they can pay for first and last month's rent. There are asset limits when a person receives SSI benefits. Generally, if a claimant has more than $2,000 in assets, they will not qualify for ongoing benefits. This makes it difficult to enter into housing where saving money for first and last month's rent can cause the claimant to lose eligibility for ongoing benefits. There is an exception to this asset limit rule. If a uh, claimant receives back benefits after winning an SSI claim, they are allowed to hold on to this money for nine months while they spend it down below the $2,000 limit. If a claimant did not have to pay these ABD benefits back, they could use this money for housing, setting them up for the future. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Next, let's hear from Tracy Lingett. Good evening, and Madam Chair and committee members, I'm gonna cut this short because a lot of this has been over um, said more, more than one time. I'm from District 7. I'm here to support in specific both bills, but specifically 5480. I am an Afro-Indigenous disabled mother of four and a part of the, a member, I should say, of the Poverty Reduction Work Group Steering Committee. I'm a recipient of ABD, which plays a part in meeting basic needs, as in those things that have been mentioned. I'm in the process of my third denial um, to be done by, to be, uh, looked at again by February the 5th. Um, I'm a, a, a woman living in poverty. I have been humiliated. I have been discriminated against by doctors, programs, lawyers who consider me to be aggressive for the fight of, 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 of this, not only this bill, but other services. And so if you would support this bill, 5480, I would much appreciate it. Thank you very much for your testimony. Justin Miller, you're next. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, Chair Wilson and Chair, uh, Chair Kuder. For the record, my name is Justin Miller. I'm a Seattle resident living in District 37. I'm a housing case manager for a nonprofit agency in King County who serves individuals with short-term and permanent disabilities. I'm providing testimony on my own behalf in support of Senate Bill 5480. Several months ago, a client elderly living with a permanent disabilities was awarded SSDI benefits. Within three months of transitioning to uh, social security uh, disability benefits, uh, he was priced out of his unit. With limited time and lack of adequate funds for a security deposit for some last month's rent for commercial living space, his $841 monthly income allowed him uh, the only option of renting a small uh, single room occupancy unit with shared bathrooms. This unhealthy living scenario that threatens to exasperate Thank his uh, disabilities would have easily been avoided if $4,728 um, would have been put into his pocket versus uh, state's pocket. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Justin, and I'm sorry to cut you off. I appreciate your testimony tonight. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, let's go with Gian Mitchell, and I believe Kathleen Knudsen has shown up. So, Gian. Hello, my name is Gian Mitchell. I work for the Washington Housing Alliance Action Fund, and I'm from Spokane. I'm here to request that the legislature support SB 5480. Last year, I worked for a small law firm in Spokane that helped people apply for Social Security disability benefits, and I frequently serve clients receiving ABD. One of our clients' experiences with ABD really exemplifies the current issues with the program. Essentially, she received ABD, eventually won supplemental security income, and then much of her back pay was taken to repay DSHS. This woman was disabled, elderly, and extremely low income. She had debts to repay, like medical bills and back rent. She didn't have any income, but her social security disability claim was adjudicated, so ABD was a vital lifeline for her, but having to pay DSHS back was a serious hardship. Her story is not an anomaly. This year, the maximum amount a person can earn from SSI is only $914 a month, while average rent for a one-bedroom in Spokane is about $1,289 monthly. Vulnerable folks like this need every dollar they can get just to survive, and I ask you to support them. Thank you. Thanks, Jean and Kathleen Knudsen for our last person on this bill. I am Kathleen Knudsen. I'm the program manager for the HEN program in Kitsap and Thurston County. Most, 
most people on ABD have been on the program sometimes for years waiting for a decision and they accrue debt during that time. They count on the back pay to settle those debts and prepare for a life on limited income. Repaying ABD takes the one opportunity they have to catch up on bills, find an inexpensive vehicle, or set aside funds for a safety net. They could even move to where they have a support system. The bridge program, it was a pilot that was administered by Commerce in 2020, allowed us to continue assistance for a period of time while easing the person into managing their own lives. Our success rate for housing retention went up substantially. The ability to extend support for a year beyond HEN gives them the stability and the opportunity to work with the case manager to find a housing situation they can afford. Thank you very much. That will close the hearing on Senate Bill 5413 and 5480 in uh, 